out of here, I think. I'm gonna check my phone. That's what it says. That's what it I'm says. I'm glad we got you on live here. This was fun getting you on the <laughs> we, we, could have, we could have our own show here too. We could funny. have our own show. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay, I got us live here. Um and I'll share it live once I um I wanna share it to my main Facebook account. I'd encourage you to do the same, but uh we are live here. I got uh, Gerald J Johnson, one of my favorite people to talk to. He's a Stop numbers lying, guy. Stop lying, David. Stop lying. God's going to strike you down right now with a lightning bolt. Bam. He's, he's, he's reliable, you know. And I, <laughs> and I, uh, Gerald, are you coming on? I know I can count on him. <laughs> oh, gosh. He he actually completes a Facebook marathon. It's a little experiment I'm doing today to see if I can get kicked out of kicked off of Facebook for doing too many lives in in one a, day, huh? I, I did once get get kicked out of a casino, but it wasn't for uh, it wasn't oh, for counting one cards. Two. Everybody, I want everybody to know, David. He counts cards. <laughs> <laughs> one of those brain, you know, really smart guys that counts cards knows how many. You know, with four decks, you know, he's like a, a two hundred and eight cards and four decks. And <laughs> See, you're a numbers guy. You know the mat. You know the strategy behind counting cards. That's good stuff. But you got to be. I don't know about all of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Well, um, just a little bit of background for those of you who may not know Gerald. He actually had his own podcast at one point. He's the executive or the president, pardon me, of the Brentwood Chamber of Commerce out in the East Bay. He has a numbers background and really helping, you know, small business, big business, look at their numbers to improve their bottom line. And he's really just a, you know, a, a genius at the numbers game and uh, business development issues. Um, with that, let me let me ask you to just tell us a little bit about your background, Gerald, and some of the various business development activities and uh, companies that you've been involved in. Sure. So um, I grew up a corporate baby. Um, actually, I went to school for computer science and uh, ended up working at mobile, developing their financial and application services. And for those people, that was like mobile's version, mobile oil, by the way, that's mobile's version of... Um, SAP or Oracle, you know, an accounting system and management system and wanted to move through the corporation and decided couldn't do that through computer application services. So I went to uh, through a sales and business consultant training program to help franchisees and company operated businesses run and manage their own business. And through a series of moves um, running um, that running the state of New Jersey, which was like a 300 million, 320 some odd million dollar business, um, doing all of their advertising um, nationwide, $43 million budget, and then doing some um, uh, running California uh, or part, Northern California. Uh, that, that, that was a billion dollar, $1.1 $1 .1 billion business through a bunch of mergers and acquisitions and all sorts of stuff. That's how I ended up working for mobile. That's how I got my background. Um, then Exxon decided they wanted to buy mobile oil and I decided um, I wanted to go out on my own shortly thereafter. So that's kind of my background. And um, since then been helping small and large businesses, some corporate clients like uh, Nectar and some smaller clients like uh, um, Handy Dads or Delta Valley Health Club or uh, I'm trying to think of all of these wide media services, whole, whole slews of different types of companies from counting firms to restaurants to fitness clubs to uh, plumbing companies to uh, handyman companies, biotech firms, um, uh, piece, uh, computer companies, all sorts of companies. And what we do is, let me just summarize this really quickly. What, what the, the premise is, is the oil industry is a very small margin business. Um, they make money on volume, not on big margins. We don't have big margins like Starbucks. So they're very well-run 
company, very um, managed very well. And so what, what we try to do is bring that management systems from a corporate side to small and mid-sized businesses. And uh, most small and mid-sized businesses don't manage themselves the way a corporation does. And it's not always because they don't have the funds to do it. Most of the times it's they don't have the um, background or the systems to do it. And so that's, what, that's where we come in. Excellent. And you are, uh, you know, also you have a interest in politics too. And unfortunately, we're not <laughs> going to discuss the numbers for uh, from 2020 today. But you know, I I do appreciate all your insights. And you know, I dabble in politics. You used to work in the field, and I really think you would find a lot of the poll data and the way um, they use numbers and politics. You know, yes, very interesting and. Um, almost like a parallel lives here, you know, with the, um, you know, I working in that field, most of my career, you working on the kind of marketing business development side with those numbers, but there's so much synergy there. And, yes. Uh, I, I mean, we live by the data. Um, it's so, it's so interesting. Um, one of the things that I learned when I was doing marketing that I didn't always know, I always, always wondered which came first, the chicken or the egg. We would, we would do polling and ask you, hey, what is it that you like about drinking coffee out of a black cup? And you'd go, oh, it's black. I like the size of the mug, blah, blah, blah. Then we'd hit you with commercials that said, hey, it's a black coffee. You know, it's, the mug is great. And then next thing you know, you're, you're reparroting back to us when we're doing our surveys what we wanted you to say in the first place. And we always try to figure out which one came first. Is it that we did the research and found out what you liked? Or is it that we pumped out what you liked um, in our messages and then you regurgitated that? So, uh, I mean, the marketing of this is uh, really important and it's important um, to target your customers. So I'm giving you a little, little thing here about targeting and focusing your business message to the appropriate customers um, and making sure you really know what your customers like, want, and need. And um, sometimes we did data so much, I could tell you who was going to buy mobile oil. Um, I knew that if you liked Marlboro cigarettes, you were more likely to buy mobile oil. If you drove a Ford truck versus a Chevy, you were more likely to buy mobile oil. So now, now I didn't even have to um, advertise to you when you were looking to buy a car, I could advertise to you next to a cigarette commercial or next to uh, um, something totally different that had nothing to do with it. But we knew that data set. That's how well we knew our customers and our target audience. Great. And um, you're actually going to be discussing, you know, probably touching on some of the numbers, but I really think you know, if small businesses want to become big, they need to know at least a little bit about what you know and the lessons that you teach. And I think, you know, I just love your tagline and a new strategy for new year is what you're going to be talking about on right. December 1st. And you're actually doing a warm up presentation earlier that morning, um, which is going to be kind of a longer version of that presentation. And um, could you just talk a little bit just to preview about what your presentation is on, on the first in terms of, you know, why people should think of a new strategy, what that might be and how to get started with it? Oh, absolutely. OK, so let's let's break this down. So told you my background in mobile every year and most corporations, most major corporations, it's um, we're actually past the date in October of the year before, we're already doing budgeting and planning for the upcoming year. So we never ever uh, jump into 2021 and not know what we're doing. We've already planned that out and have a budget, an estimate about income, an ex um, uh, estimate about expenses. We've reported that out, reported it up and down the organization to get an overall um, number about what we're gonna do. And that's based on assumptions. And now it's even more important with COVID to know what you do. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is taking a look back um, at what you did in the past and what are the trends in your financials? What, what, what are your sales trends? Was it impacted by COVID? What are your expense trends? Did you cut down your expenses? What happened over the last three years? You know, some businesses grew because of COVID. 
right? If you happen to be uh, making masks, if you had to be making uh, latex gloves, if you happen to be in one of those industries, you grew. If you happen to be an online store like Amazon, you grew. So looking at what happened in the past and then applying what we think is gonna happen in the future. Um, what are the strengths of our companies? Like doing that SWOT analysis, what are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats and trends going on right now? Um, and in this particular climate, What's your best estimation of how you're going to operate going it forward in the next year? So first, taking a look at the, in the past, then looking at what, do a little analysis about what's going on right now. And then kind of getting all of that information. I always love to do a little bit of benchmarking, do a little research to see what's out there um, with your competitors, what's going on in the industry. You got to put all that together like a little recipe, you know, stir it in a pot. And then I want you to say, make some projections about where you see your business going in the future and put some targets down and manage to those targets. So, so often, you know, uh, people, they say, oh, I got this great strategy. And where is it? It's in a binder on their bookshelf, right? They haven't looked at it. It's all dusty and dirty and grimy. How do you operationalize your strategy so that it's something that's not on a binder or it's not like the business plan where you applied for your, you know, um, that you applied to the bank for, you know, to get a loan. It's just, it's just there. It's something that you operationalize and you have targets that you're trying to hit on a monthly basis. And so if I had, hopefully that guy that gave the arc of what we're going to be talking about. Now, perfect. And I, you just have a wealth of knowledge in that you combine really this, you know, the numbers with the marketing, with the business management. And I really just want to give people kind of a flavor about, you know, your background and how you approach these issues. So I'm excited to have you speak. And I, I don't know if you do have that prop you were going to show us. Oh, here. my little oh, Bella? A live broadcast. Okay, look, 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 Bella. Here we go. There's Bella. Yeah. There, there's there's... Bella. She's been sleeping. She is sleeping on See, she got bedhead. <laughs> poor Bella oh my gosh she's been sleeping see that's a little multiple for you she just been sleeping in my lap great well those are that's for the folks who have waited around to uh, see the uh, climax of this broadcast and that's I really the climax I mean god I got so much for you <laughs> oh my gosh no hey. I know you do and um, that's why we really need to have you know, a, lo a bit a longer workshop or a bigger event with you, Gerald, and um, just the wealth of knowledge that you have. And um, we will put the links for that event that you have earlier that day, which wow. is a longer version of a new strategy for a new year, which is a great organization. I don't know if you want to give a quick. Yeah, uh, that's the Institute for Management Consultants um, USA, and I'm in the Northern California chapter, so they call it IMC NorCal, Institute for Management Consultants. Um, and those are all management consultants of various stripes, and um, it's a great organization, professional organization. But I do want to say one thing. I just want to make one pitch. I want to look into the camera and say, is your business, how did you perform this year in your business? Do you manage your business? by your bank account? Do you just look at your bank account and go, oh, I'm doing good this year, or oh, I'm hurting this year? Well, that's not how you manage your business. So if you really want to learn how to manage your business in a more professional manner, and I'm not saying you're not, but not just by looking at your bank account, by setting up great KPIs and managing your business, pulling the right levers so you can make money at the end of the year, and look back come 2021 at this time and go, wow, I did a great job. You need to come to uh, our thing at a quantum leap and see a new strategy for a new year. So that's what I say. And not only you're going to see me, but you're going to see a lot of other uh, great talented people that I happen to know are going to be there like Corey Knott and Valerie Lewis and um, uh, Miley Comer. So a lot of folks are going to be there. This guy has, has pulled together some of the brightest minds in the Bay Area that I know. And uh, if you want to uh, really enhance your business, you need to sign up. Um, it'll be worth it. 
be worth everything you have, and you will grow your business in the next year. If you just take a few things from me, a few things from Val, a few things from Corey, and a few things from Miley, and a few things from David, I guarantee you it'll be worth your time and energy. So come see me. You won't regret it. That's my spiel. And uh, Sabacon Consulting, we make business better, dude. We make business better. Thanks, Gerald. Well, with that, we're going to sign off and uh, um, we appreciate you coming on to give us a preview. No problem.